Hi, this is Jason Gorber from ThatShelf.com, and we're here to talk about the Rolling Stones playing the immortal Elma Combo set, one of the most famous rock and roll shows that ever took place in my local city of Toronto. Big change. So, here we are at last, an official release of the Elma Combo set. Um, Rolling Stones, um, in the mid-1970s, uh, uh, sort of mid to late 1970s had undergone so much turmoil um, a lot of people thought that they're out of it I mean look the Beatles had broken up um, I guess uh, seven and a half years before um, uh, the who were going through all kinds of turmoil as Zeppelin had broken up um, uh, punk was sort of uh, coming to four disco was all over the radio and it was like the Rolling Stones were thought of as old and over the hill and uh, the best of their work was behind them um, they got into some serious hardcore drugs. There was all kinds of issues uh, with Keith actually being arrested in, in Canada in the early 70s. All kinds of nonsense taking place. Um, and uh, they had they'd sort of taken on the absolute excesses of uh, 1970s uh, rock and roll, grabbed it by the throat, and it was frankly killing them. Um, had taken out um, uh, uh, Brian Jones uh, uh, sort of earlier, uh, later in the 1960s, and here they were almost a decade on, and um, it was uh, wrecking havoc with them uh, creatively, musically, uh, and personally. Um, so in, in many ways, uh, people look back extremely um, uh, hagiographically uh, with this particular set, but rather than playing like Madison Square Gardens for 10 days, they played this tiny club on Spadina and College Street uh, in Toronto um, called the Alma Combo, um, which itself has undergone so many highs and lows. Every time it th we think that the Alma Combo is going to close forever, it manages to open up again. Um, I've only ever heard of this show. Uh, this is such um, um, a, a well-talked-about um, uh, uh, period of history uh, and the Rolling Stones legacy. Um, again, I'd heard sort of rumblings about it. My, my perhaps most surreal uh, connection was I was watching uh, Canadian band Trooper at the Album Combo, one of the few shows I actually saw there. Um, and midway out, um, uh, the lead singer of Trooper came out and said, guys, I was just in the dressing room. And do you realize that's where Margaret Trudeau fucked Mick Jagger. And so, yeah, the mother of our current prime minister, uh, hypothetically or allegedly, uh, was engaged in sexual congress with the uh, lead singer of the Rolling Stones in the green room of this famed demo combo. So if you want another bit of frisson to add to the musical elements here, that's what we got. That's how historical this is uh, um, at play. Um, the actual set list um, is pretty wild. Um, Stretch the Honky Tonk Woman, all down the line. And it fade a bunch of stuff, obviously, from Exile. Um, Let It Bleed and all of that stuff. Rips this joint, Brown Sugar, Jump Jack Flash. Um, it, it, it all comes uh, here. Um, but you also have stuff like Little Red Rooster. You have like some of their old classic blues uh, covers from... Um, um, uh, that they were, they were so noted for. Um, I'm super excited to actually dive, uh, into this record listening, but I thought I would actually show what it looks like. It comes in this, uh, nice little box. Uh, the, it's, it's not cheap, but it's not crazy expensive. It is, however, limited edition, especially here in Toronto. It's going to be relatively hard to get. I mean, there, there are obviously thousands and thousands of copies of these, uh, but obviously for local Rolling Stones fans, this is going to be a big deal. Um, there's a Live at Massey Hall, um, Tears for Fears, that came out at Record Store Day, which was almost impossible to get here for obvious reasons. In Britain, they have all kinds of copies. So, you know, we like we like our local stuff as much as we like the Rolling Stones, who have played an incredible um, role, it should be say, in the history of uh, music in uh, Toronto. There's the Keith Moon situation, obviously the free concert that he gave after he was arrested. Um, there's a Sarstock concert that they um, connected with and their whole connection with Live Nation, I think it's Live Nation, I'm getting that correct, but um, the deal is with the um, uh, with, with, with the connection with the touring, they would do their rehearsals here, they played the Horseshoe, another club uh, not so far away, I never got to go to one of those, but they, they would uh, habitually start their tour here, there's a real strong connection to Toronto, sort of firmly established on record anyway with uh, this particular one. So let's open this up, see what it looks like inside. If I do this carefully without destroying anything, because um, neurotically, once again, I'm going to keep the plastic on the outside pending what I hope are the ability to, if you look at my other video that was launched 
Um, hopefully looking at new storage solutions for box sets such as this one. So I don't have to keep it just in its original shrink. So what do we have in here? We have obviously an outer box with a track list and this sort of see-through um, uh, cutout that you can see my hand poking through there. And the color that's picking up on is the color of the inside uh, vinyl. You have two gatefolds, multicolored gatefolds. So I guess you can decide what color you actually want to show through. Inside you have a little bit here of a spiel um, uh, for um, uh, what actually took place uh, by Paul Sexton, it looks like. Um, so it's basically, you're gonna have a two-part essay. This is part two of the essay with our beloved tongue logo. It's coming to Lego. Um, I'm kind of uh, torn about that. Oh, that's actually, I hadn't realized that. Um, so underneath the pink, is, it's probably very hard to see, but it's very lightly sort of screen printed um, on there. Um, actually, you know what that might be? That might actually be, because it's not on these colors, that might actually be that the, the light that's shining through there has slightly discolored um, the actual pink ink. Interesting. So we'll see how that actually plays. Um, and here we are, the rest of the essays. Uh, on the inside of the first gatefold. And then each record comes in picture sleeves. So let's see how this will actually open that up, but you can see this, right? Photographs of the performance. Again, it's, I mean, you can see, yeah, they're going straight and there's uh, a bottle on top of their uh, amp, um, which, uh, you tell me, I mean, that G looks like a Moog G, but it can't actually be a Moog amp. I, don't, I have no idea what it is. This is why I don't play guitar. Um, the late, great Charlie. What a great photo of him. Again, incredibly intimate venue. Um, um, that gives you a sense of what we're at. We're, we're talking like, instead of them playing to 50,000 people at some crazy stadium, that's what we're dealing with. Absolute old school getting back there. O to be... Uh, I mean, it was way too young in 77, but it would have been wild to be there. Um, the records themselves, no crazy colored vinyl. They're in these um, sort of, what do we want to call these, sort of lyric sleeves. So not quite uh, what we want. The record has, you know, a little bit of, um, it's a little bit foggy, but it looks relatively clean. Uh, it looks relatively flat. I don't see any particularly egregious marks. I mean, there is some joy of new vinyl there is some sort of surface discoloration here but it, i'm hoping that that won't actually affect the playback um we will see uh it will get a good cleaning anyway but uh yeah the joy of buying these box sets um uh you just want definitely want to open them and you want to check the records you don't i mean i know people want to keep them sealed but while they're limited edition you want to be able to make sure that you actually get uh, one uh, coming back. Same thing here. A little bit of sort of fogginess on it um, um, from the pressing. Some schmutz. But uh, other than that, I don't see anything particularly major. Definitely a bunch of scuffing here. Um, you know, not as pristine as you want. That's sometimes what you get from having them shoved into uh, paper sleeves like this. Again, this is not a cheap uh, record, but this is what you get with uh, brand new releases. Incredibly frustrating at times. Um... Hopefully it'll play okay. Um, if not, we will have to uh, worry about looking for a replacement. So um, uh, uh, here we are, mixed by uh, Bob Clear Mountain, um, uh, the, who's, who's done a gazillion things, and the lacquers are actually cut by Bernie Grumman. Um, it looks like uh, it's set on the back of his press in France, which is interesting. Um, so there we are, more images on the back. Looking at the records again. Aha! Uh -huh. So since this is the last one, again, so it's kind of probably hard to tell, but there's a little bit of milkiness again on top of it. Some sort of hairline um, surface uh, marks on this, but it doesn't look like it actually goes in the groove. I'll clean that up and see how it goes. On the back, we actually have the Stones logo. So yeah, the side, um, I guess it would be side H, uh, seems to be empty. I'll put that down, and then the last one to look at is this. So again, that Alma Combo, that sort of, the, uh, this um, palm tree uh, motif is something that um, continues to uh, be part of their logo, um, illuminate outside, and yeah, there's Mick uh, at the Alma, um, um, with a full breakdown of all the tracks on there, 
and let's look at what this record looks like. Oh, same, same. Again, nothing incredibly egregious. Some paper on it, a little bit of sort of murkiness, but it looks reasonably flat and is what it is. There we are. So that's uh, the Rolling Stones uh, Live at the Elmo. I look forward to actually listening to it um, and diving it in. Um, this is why you have record cleaners, kids. Uh, be it a spin clean, being uh, whatever uh, you uh, want to look at. I have a degritter, um, which is what I tend to use. But here we are. Uh, looks like an exceptional set. It's Bernie Grumman, so promised to have a really great sound. But just right out of the package, right out of these, it's going to go from these into proper, for me, uh, rice paper um, um, sleeves uh, lined in uh, poly um, uh, from either Vinyl Store Solutions or Mobile Fidelity um, or the equivalent. Uh, and uh, that's how I'm going to store the records so that, you know, 15 years from now or whatever, taking them in and out of these paper sleeves is not going to do even more damage. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy. Please let us know in the comments what you think of this show when you have a chance to listen to it. For ThatShelf.com, I'm Jason Gorber. Thanks so much, and we will see you next video. All the best.